Right now, we're going to talk about the heart journal again, and we're going to go into a little bit more depth about what exactly it is that we're trying to accomplish with the heart journal. And this is sort of the second part of that um, contemplation that we did before. I had an experience the other day. I was having coffee with a friend of mine, and she said, you know, Susan, I make the dumbest decisions, and I find myself doing the dumbest things. And they maybe they're not too harmful, but they could be. I, I mean, they're not practical. And I find myself doing this over and over. For example, I keep wanting to buy a timeshare in Maui. Now, I don't live in Maui. I'm not close to Maui. Maui is a long flight away. It's beautiful, but, you know, and I keep thinking, why, Susan, I want to buy timeshares in, in places that I don't, I'm, don't, I'm not really able to go to very often. And, and I thought, well, this doesn't sound like such a bad idea. We have vacations, right? And we have high-speed internet everywhere. True. But that was really avoiding the whole point. The whole point is that when we find ourselves caught in kind of a repetition syndrome or sort of even like tra traumatic reenactment, we're reenacting certain things, we're not really in control, not to say that we have to be in control of everything and we don't want to be like control freaks, right? But the point is, is that we lose our freedom if we don't understand our hearts. So let's keep that in mind. We lose our freedom if we do not understand our hearts. So as Rousseau said, you know, every, we were all born free, but everywhere around us people are in chains. He was talking about political oppression. I'm talking about emotional oppression. It's not spiritual, but emotional oppression. It has to do with the fact that we do not know our hearts. So only through knowing our hearts can we truly be free. And we will understand. Like, we don't have to be trapped in, well, I want a timeshare in Maui, which is a good thing. I, I want, I'm, <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I should probably think of that myself. But it's the point of what is that actually symbolizing? What is that tip of the iceberg about? Where, what is that mass of, of ice underneath the water getting ready to bump into? So, thank you.